Hi, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to show you how to use SourceRike to make really powerful and incredible Mogerts in After Effects. Not only that, but I'll show you how to use SourceRike right. Many people don't know how to deal with hanging characters and alignment issues, but don't worry about any of that stuff because I'm going to show you how to fix it today. Now right about now you may be wondering what SourceRect even is, and I'll tell you. SourceRect is a way for us to figure out the size of text and use that to make objects resize, reposition, or reanimate entirely based on text size. It can be hard to describe, so let me just show you what SourceRect can do. Alright, now let's begin. The first thing we need is some text. Then we can call SourceRect on it, and this will draw an imaginary little box around our text. We can get the width and the height from this box. This is what we'll use to create objects that are dependent on the size of the text. There's even a thing called top, which is the space from the baseline of the text to the top of the text. This does not count hanging characters. But we can still get the height of hanging characters using the top and the height. You might first assume that we'd subtract the top from the height to get the hanging character portion, but since the top is already negative, all we have to do is combine the height and the top. Alright, so we're inside After Effects, and the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. Once you're inside of your project, create a new composition. I call all of my compositions main. Alright, let's make a new text layer. Go ahead and put whatever you want in here. And make sure that it's exactly at 960 by 540. You'll notice it's not actually centered perfectly because the anchor point is at the baseline of the text and that's what's being set to 960 by 540. So let's go ahead and set our anchor point to half the height of hello there. That way, halfway through the height is centered perfectly on the screen. I'm gonna create a new expression on the anchor point by holding Alt or Option and clicking the stopwatch. On the left-hand side of the comma, we're just going to put zero because we're not changing the x-axis of the anchor point. On the right-hand side, we're going to subtract half the height. This layer dot source rect at time time dot height divided by two. Now the height's going to be positive, which would move the anchor point down. So this actually needs to be negative to move it up to the halfway point. All right, now it's centered right. Now we can go ahead and make a box. Once you've dragged in your box, make sure you go into Transform Rectangle and make sure the position is at 0, 0. If I were you, I'd get rid of the stroke and change the fill to something pleasant. And let's go ahead and move the box behind the text. And while we're changing colors, let's add a fill option to the text. And the reason we make a fill color for our text instead of changing the color through the character panel is because a fill color can be added to the Essential Graphics panel so someone in Premiere can change the text. Also, we can add expressions to our own fill colors. So go ahead and hit Animate, Fill Color, RGB, and let's set that to black. That looks pretty good. And let's chuck that into the Essential Graphics panel before we forget about it. And let's do the same with the box. And let's make sure we add source text to the Essential Graphics panel. Now let's go ahead and change the text. Okay, what's going on? This doesn't look right. So the box does not resize to our text. So if we wanted to change the size of the box, we'd have to create sliders that adjust the size like this and allow our user in Premiere to change the size of the box. And honestly, that's really not a very great solution. A much better solution is to have the box automatically change to the size of the text and maybe give the Premiere user some padding options. So let's go ahead and make a new null layer, name this controls, and what we're going to do is we're going to put all of our controls inside of this null layer, almost as if it was a folder. Right click on it, hover over effect, go to expression controls, and create a slider. We're going to do things the wrong way first, and then fix our mistakes. I'll name this slider horizontal size. And we're going to duplicate that, which you can do by pressing command or control D. If you right click on the slider value, you can actually edit the range. And the reason you'd want to edit the range is because by default it's 0 to 100 and we want our box's height and width to be larger than 100. Let's set ours to something like 0 to 1000. Now, let's create a new expression for our size 
and set it equal to our new sliders. We can do this using the pick whip tool, just make sure that the horizontal size is on the left of the comma and the vertical size is on the right of the comma. Okay, now before we forget about it, let's throw our sliders straight into the essential graphics panel. And keep in mind, this is how most people are making Mogerts, by using manual sliders. And it's okay to do this, but when you can use SourceRec to automatically change the width and height for your user, it's a much better experience. You might see that the hanging characters are kind of poking out of the box and aren't centered quite perfect, and that's something that I'm going to go over in a second. Just ignore that for now. Pay attention to the box. Is this really a great experience for a Premiere user every time they change their text, they have to completely modify the box. And that's just way too tedious. And if you're not using SourceRect, the Premiere user is going to need to use another slider just to fix the hanging characters. If you want to make a really good Mogurt, you should handle this automatically, and that's where SourceRect comes in. How about we set our size of our box equal to the text size, and then add what we're calling the box size right now as padding on top of it. Let's clear out our size expression for the box and create a new variable called x padding and set that equal to our box our horizontal box size and create a new variable called y padding set that equal to the vertical box size and create another expression called main text let's just pick whip the text layer now we can get the width and the height of main text like so main text dot source rect at time time dot width plus x padding main text dot source rect at time time dot height plus y padding all right and let's let's reduce our our sizes and change the text there we go the text automatically changes and the user still has control over horizontal and vertical sizing but they don't have to constantly fidget with it when they're changing values. And this is where SourceRect is powerful. SourceRect allows you to create motors that are easy to use, not tedious, and are a better experience. Now I'm sure it's bothering you a lot that the G is not being accounted for and it's a little bit off-centered. It's certainly annoying me. How about we fix that? So there's this thing called top and left. I showed you top in the animation played just before this. We can use that to account for the hanging character. Right now our anchor point is taking half of the height and moving it up. And that works fine when we don't have a hanging G, like so. And that's because the baseline is the very bottom. So it moves up from the bottom half the text and gets right in the middle. But the second you have a hanging character, the baseline doesn't start at the bottom or the top. So when you're moving half of the distance of the height, you're moving to a completely unrelated area. That is not going to be the center. So the solution is to start from the top and move down half the height. So all we need to do is get sourcerect.top, which will bring the anchor point to the top, and add half the height. And it brings the anchor point to the top because After Effects brings us sourcerect.top as a negative value. And a negative value is going to bring us up. So let's do that right now. Let's go into our text anchor point and add this layer dot source rect at time time dot top and add source rect at time dot height divided by two. Once again we're adding them together because top is already negative so it's really the same as taking half the height and subtracting the top if the top were positive but it's already negative so we just combine them. There we go. Now it is perfectly aligned no matter what we do with the text if we get rid of the G it's still aligned right. If we add more hanging characters, it doesn't care. Now a similar thing will happen on the left and right of the Mogurt. If you look closely right here, you can see that the Y is actually poking out of the box. Now you would assume that the anchor point is perfectly aligned. When I align it left, it should be on the very left of the text. When I align it in the center, it should be on the very center, and so on and so forth. But if you look closely, it's actually not aligned correctly. The anchor point should be here, but it's not. This has something to do with the way that fonts are mapped, and we can work around it using sourcerect.left. Now width and height are very nice and very useful, but they're almost useless by themselves. You need top and left to fix the small imperfections that could completely ruin a Mogurt. So I've shown you top, but what is left? Well, let's set up an example. 
Right here, you can see there is an imperfection on the edge that allows the W outside of the source rect box. We can use left to fix this. The reason we need to use left is because the anchor point is wrong by default, and left takes us to the very left of the mogert, starting at the very first pixel. We can add width divided by 2 to left, and we get a perfect center because we've corrected the incorrect anchor point. Okay, now we're going to use dot left to fix the anchor point. So all we have to use is dot left and then add wherever we want the anchor point to be. Since we want it to be halfway through the text, we would do dot left plus the width divided by 2. So let's do that right now. Go to the text anchor point and we can see right here we're at 0 and that's our problem. We're trusting the default anchor point. Let's set that equal to this layer dot source rect at time time dot left. Now the anchor point is perfect, but it's going to be on the left. Perfectly, though. So we're good. Now we need to add the width divided by 2, plus this layer dot source rect at time, time dot width divided by 2. There we go. It is perfectly centered by the pixel. You can see it's completely accurate on both sides. Now we can increase the padding because that obviously looks better. And we have our first source rect based mogert. Now if I were you, I'd want to make it a little bit more interesting. So before we finish up, let's make the mogert something that you'd actually want to use. Click the animate button and click scale. Now we're going to add a scale character animation. Set the scale equal to zero and that's how the text will start. Now we're going to animate the range selector. The offset needs to start at negative 100% and it needs to end at 100%. Now if you're wondering why it starts with the text visible, let's fix that. Go into advanced and click ramp up where it says square. Should not be square. Now let's watch it. Looks okay, looks okay. Let's change ease high and ease low to make it look a little bit prettier. Something around the lines of 25 and 100 should look pretty good. And maybe the animation should be a little bit shorter. Yeah, that seems to look quite a bit better. One last polishing step. Hover over these keyframes and press F9. There we go, they're eased in. Now for the real test. Does it break when we change the text? Let's try something like, hello world. Looks pretty good to me. You've made your first automated Mogart. Great job. Now I'd like to show you one last thing before we end the video. I'd like to show you what's possible with SourceRect and why you're learning all of this. So without further ado, here's a sequence of Mogerts I made that are completely reliant on SourceRect and really show what SourceRect can do. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any feedback that you'd like to leave me, go ahead and leave that in the comments, I'd love to read it. 
If you're interested in seeing more content like this, this is all my YouTube channel is. So if you want to learn more about expressions or Mogerts in general, check out my other YouTube videos.